five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bye. This is the part where I start singing. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett. This is The Ramble. Coming to you live from New York City in Harlem. We'll be here until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. And hello, everybody. Yes, here we are. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, I oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where's the, where, what happened to the button? I lost the button. Where's the button? There's the button. Here's the button. See, right, and then look right in back of me. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Okay. Girlfriend bought that for me, and if I don't, if I don't use it, she gets very mad. Okay. All right. Hi. How are you? What's happening uh, in what is uh, the new United States? I say the new United States because uh, things now are not like they used to be. And perhaps uh, in the long run, we'll never be the same ever again. Anyway, uh, it's, um, it's, it's really quite something that's going out there. Look, look at this. Wait a minute. I got a little map here. Wait a minute, let me see if I can uh, bring it up here for you. Uh, this is the world as we now know it. Uh, wait a minute. I got I to gotta do this. I got to... Bring this down so you can start seeing it. There we go. Look at that. See all those red spots? Yeah, yeah. Uh, China is the leading country, 81,074 uh, cases of uh, the coronavirus. Italy is in second place, 31,506. All this may have changed since this map was put up. I just refreshed it, however. Spain, 11,746. Germany, 8,320. France, 7,695. And then the U.S., with 6,362 uh, reported cases. And we go down and down and down. And I'm, I'm, uh, I hate this map. It kind of just uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work like it should. Anyway, uh, yeah, anytime I move this, I, uh, yeah, that changes. But wait a minute, I just want to look down here. Who's at the very bottom? Uh, is there anybody? There's nobody with no cases, okay? But Equatorial Guinea, if you want to go there, there's only one case there. Nepal, there's only one case. Sudan, Bhutan. It, it, but it, this whole map is really basically red. Um, up here. Uh, what is that? That's in North. That's well. That's Upper North America. Okay, that's up. Uh, Alaska, hardly any. Look at that. Anyway, uh, that's that's what it's all about. Okay, that's that's the current map of things, and uh, it's um, it's um, it's kind of depressing, isn't it? And uh, here in New York, um, everything well, uh, everything's closed. Um, and uh, nobody knows exactly quite what to do. Uh, but what I did is I, you know, I looked out the window last night at the street and I went, oh boy, it's like I'm living in, a, in, a, uh, in some kind of science fiction world in which a disease has hit the world and the world has stayed indoors. And that's exactly what it looked like out there, like some kind of sci-fi movie. Uh, so today I thought I'd take my iPhone out. We ventured into the street. Uh, uh, I, I endangered myself because, see, I'm 80 and I have a, a condition uh, where I've been radiated and so probably my immune system is somewhat lowered uh, and I could, I could get something, but I, I braved it. I and Marjorie, uh, so that maybe you could see what New York City was looking like at this point. It's not too dramatic, but it's different than it was. Watch this. Uh, wait a minute, I, gotta, I forgot, I gotta hit a button. Watch this. Welcome to, to New the, York. To the new normal. <laughs> We're going out for a little stroll and show you what New York is like on a wonderful, sunny spring day. Infected, oh, it's supposed to be over the nose. <laughs> oh. Yeah, 
good. Yeah, gotta go over the nose. Go over the nose. Yeah, and these are, aren't really great protection. These are the cheap ones. These are the cheap ones, but at least you the know. The N95s. We each have one of those. They're in the apartment. But this is this is what we call the new normal. This is strolling through New York. Yeah. In fact, what's wrong with us in this elevator is we don't have social distance. <laughs> Get away from me. Get away from me. Okay, so we're venturing out uh, into the uh, unknown. Into the now into the city that never sleeps, right? <laughs> That's what they call New York, New York, the city that doesn't sleep. Let's see what we what we find out here. Oh, here are some people. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. I'm not wearing it. <laughs> You're not wearing it? Are you embarrassed to wear it? Yeah, I'll wear it when I go into the store. Uh, let's go down this street. Let's go down this, well, let's go down this one because this is the most used street. There's people in this street. I know, but I want to show that, well, you know, what New York is like right now. More people than I thought, yeah. but not as many as usual. The, the uh, traffic of automobiles seems to be a bit heavier, however. There's a guy wearing the mask. Uh, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be, but it's certainly, it's not as crowded as this street usually is, you know. Uh, I thought the dog was wearing a mask. He's just got a <laughs> muzzle on. Uh, but this is on. usually there are more people here. This is a very busy street. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going down to the grocery store to. You know, get, your get bread. stuff. Get your bread. Look, your gray hair is starting I to show know, up. I She's know. decided to go gray. I'm going, I'm fabulous women going gray. Right. Well, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be, but it's more quiet than usual. Yeah. This is like, now this isn't even a Sunday. Sunday, this would be crowded because of all the. Uh, Yesterday it was empty. Uh, yeah, no more religion. I don't forget, I told them what to do it We today. can't pray that, that we'll live. Okay. They do it online. They do it online. <laughs> they do what online? They had church services yeah. online. Because right now, New York is at the edge of what? Lockdown? Almost. We're yeah. right there. Yeah. I think uh, de Blasio has requested to Como. Como well, hasn't said yes. By the way, yet. Cuomo was wonderful on terrific, television today. Terrific. The kind of thing the president should be doing to calm people down. And he's not minimizing it, but he's also very real in his response. Yes. But this is New York now. Now, in about a couple of days, it might even be more quiet. Well, it'd be interesting to see in the morning. Like you saw the picture that my friend showed me of the subway this morning. It's yeah. totally empty. That yeah. was seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I go down on the subway to see what it's like down there. But, huh? Probably like a petri dish. Probably like a petri dish down there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is New York. Yeah, it's 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 a lot quieter than it usually is. Usually around in here, it's uh, it's a kind of a human traffic jam. But the pigeons, who always congregate down here, here, don't seem to care. Right. Right? You'll see them in a few moments. Ah, boy. Here we go. Look at the pigeons. You're just getting the oranges, that's it, right? I no, mean, I'm, you're just getting the bread. Some bread, yeah. I need oranges. Okay, well, whatever you need. That's it. Fine. Look, yeah. the pigeons don't have to worry about the coronavirus. The coronavirus doesn't bother them. They are fine. They could stay. God, who feeds yeah. them all this? What? I, I know. A lot of them. Here we go. There's a pharmacy open. 
They're all pharmacies are all open. Well, pharmacies and food stores, but I bet Popeyes isn't open. I bet it is. I, we want to see? Let's go see if Popeyes is open. Uh, These all takeout places are open. Yeah, but they may not let people in. outside, you know, mm -hmm. separating people by th six feet, I guess. Yeah. But I don't see line, but I see people going in there. Oh, you really? Yeah. yeah. And then, but there aren't people going in, they're kind of standing at the door and coming out again. So who knows? Is the UPS store open? Yeah. It is, are you sure? Yeah, open seven days a week. <laughs> Let's see here. Are they doing it? No. No, no. Yes. Look, they, but they won't let it, let anybody see how this caution tape is around the tables. Oh, they won't let you sit. They won't let anybody sit. No, but you can go and take out. Yeah, you can go in and take out. Yeah, they, they, due to the corona, yeah. they sit down, you gotta buy and go. Which is good. Yeah. It's very good. Okay, it's very good. Yeah. Stay healthy and hydrated. Yes. You don't want you don't want Popeye's chicken tonight, do you? No, do you? Well, Let's do it tomorrow. You have that steak tonight. Uh, what do you think? What do you mean, what do I think? <laughs> Let's go get the bread. We'll get the Popeye's tomorrow. Okay. Oh, and I just cramped my foot. Red stuff. Some stuff. Okay, this is our little tour to see how quiet it is. A little walk outside. It is pretty quiet. The fish store is open. Well, of course, but it's no, it's no place to sit. You get your stuff and leave. Yeah. It's funny, they had that caution tape around the, uh, yeah. the, table around the table. Yeah, the table. Starbucks yeah. moved all the tables and chairs yeah. and taped it. Oh boy. Here's the pharmacy, I'm sure. I was going to get some hand sanitizer <laughs> or face masks. Yeah. Like you'll uh, see it, right? <laughs> Spare face mask, please. <laughs> Here we go. Is there anything else you need while you're here? You want to get oranges? Oranges. And a grapefruit juice I could wait a couple of days. Stay. Don't get too close to people. Keep a social distance. I'll meet you right here. Oh, look at this. This is packed in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know if we want to. We don't want to. We don't want to. It's just too much. Look at this, folks. Right. Stores are packed. Wow. Say so what time it's open? I don't know. We'll Anything? find out. I'll get it for you tomorrow. You get it for me tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. It's my low carb bread. Banks, of course, are open, right? Yeah, banks are always open. Yeah. The ATM. But look at that line. Wow, look at that. There's a line it's to the li ATM? It's, it's an outside line, yeah. But how come there isn't one outside of Bank of America? Because no one's banking there. Look at that, the line. Zoom in there. See, there's a line for the for the bank. Wow. Ah. Wow. Why would you think it'd be a line for the bank? I don't know, but people are want cash, I guess, so they can do their takeout. Yeah. Uh. 
I guess our bank isn't as popular. That's not my bank. When did you go on old Tennessee Beach? This is my bank, but there doesn't seem to be. Oh it's right here. Huh? He's taking a bath. Uh, we're <laughs> taking a bath on our ATM. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Well, I think uh, we were going to go to the store, but I think you get an idea of what it's like when you looked at those tables in Popeyes. Yeah. Well, look at look at this street. Here's a normal street. You're going to go to Popeyes tomorrow to get chicken. No, to, to, to get your bread. No, but you're going to get chicken tomorrow? Well, then we have to go together. When? To go down to Popeye's? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But not in the morning. No. Anyway. This, I, is a, this is our life. That's life under the new normal. <laughs> this street's pretty quiet. Yeah. But it usually is anyway, so. Yeah, that's true. You know. Uh... Hardware stores are still allowed to be open. What else is allowed? Takeout stores, takeout restaurants. Well, any any food restaurants cannot be open for seating, but they can be open for takeout. If they're doing takeout, like Tom Colicchio was on television the other night, all his restaurants are closed. Yeah. I mean, just closed. Just closed? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Stay safe. Yes. <laughs> Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Actually, you should get better ones than yeah, these. Yeah, get the N95s. We each have an N95, which we're not wearing today. Because we're, we don't feel we're extra. We're going crazy today. But you notice people weren't keeping distance going into that yeah, uh, supermarket? Yeah, and the, lot, the, the line to, anyway. to check out was packed. Anyway, everybody, be safe. Be okay. safe. Bye. Okay, this is part of the new normal. You have to do 20 seconds, so it's... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Oprah. Happy birthday to you. And then you have to do it again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You look like a mustard and you act like one too. And she's done. All right. And now we do the squirt. Ta da! Ta da! Well, that was fun. That was our outing for the day. Yeah, that was our exercise. That was it. And now it's back to watching more TV. More TV. Yeah. Let's do it. Bye. <laughs> and that was our little trip outside. I hope you enjoyed that. It uh, it was uh, it it was it was not a, if I it were to show you a comparison of say what a street that street was like on any other given day, you'd see a profound difference in the amount of people that are out there. What I did find was interesting is how few people were wearing masks. Uh, uh, it's uh, it it is a, the new normal, folks, and we better get used to it. And there are a lot of things that we're not going to go back to. You know, there are habit patterns that are being formed now and things that people are getting used to where they're not going to go back to them, like the movie theaters, for instance, being closed down. Or they're not going to movies. Uh, suddenly, when the movie theaters open up, say, in two or three months, okay, are they all suddenly going to say, oh, i got to go to a movie? Or are they going to say, you know, I'm used to getting them at home now. In fact, uh, my friend Shecky was telling me that Universal, to combat uh, this, uh, this plague on their industry, has decided to release all the current movies that would be in the theaters, like The Invisible Man and I can't remember a couple of other pictures, release them online. And so you can go there and see them online for $20, by the way. And it's only available, you, you, you order it, and then you can watch it over a period of three days, and then you can't download it anymore, okay? Uh, uh, so they're charging about what you would pay to go to a movie theater. Instead, they're letting you see it at home. And uh, I guess you can go to Universal's website or whatever, and you can see that. Uh, it's, it's all kind of changed, and it's all part of the new normal. And what's going to happen is it's going to be interesting if people suddenly go, I, well, now I want to go back to the movies. I don't think so. They're getting used to not doing certain things, okay? Um, I think restaurants will rebound, but it's, it's still going to be quite a while. And uh, we're not really getting the kind of help from the, from the government. We're not getting the... Today, I'll tell you, today, 
Um, Mario Cuomo went on, uh, as he's done for a couple of days, and I've never sat down and really watched Mario Cuomo doing this, but he was looking at, he was giving a speech about, you know, all that's going on and about what it amounts to, the new normal. And um, he was terrific. He made you feel he, he, like he was talking directly to you and that he was talking on a very personal basis to the lives that we lead. And I, I wish I could play it for you, but it's long. And uh, But if you get a chance to see it online, you've got to see it. He was magnificent. We're not getting that same kind of... Uh, feeling from the government. We're getting a very sterile feeling. And it's mainly because this president has no ability at uh, the common touch, okay, and dealing with common human beings. Um, and he doesn't think of this as a, uh, as, as a, uh, 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 a plague as much as he thinks about it as something that he takes personally. You know, everything's personal. Anytime anybody says the government isn't doing enough, oh, it's his fault. Well, you know, if somebody said, out of, ten, out of 10, what kind of a job rating would you give yourself? He says, oh, a 10. You know, um, <laughs> he's amazing. But anyway, but we need more help from the government than just a handout, which is now what they're thinking of doing. Uh, there's this whole thing where they've come up with this idea that they're going to, Put a, send $1,000 to everybody or something like that to uh, take care of the loss in money that people have coming in. Uh, that ain't going to do it, but uh, 1000 bucks to everybody. And uh, all of a sudden I said, uh, you know, is, is um, who was that guy, the Asian guy who was running for president? Yang, Andrew Yang. Didn't he say he wanted to give everybody 1000 bucks? He was out there before Donald Trump was. Anyway. I'm going to open up the lines here. It, you know, I, it, I guess there's a chance for you to talk to other people, okay? Have some kind of interpersonal relationship when we do the citizens panel, which is a very simple process. Uh, and you simply call us at uh, GabNet Live using Skype, and you can be part of the citizen panel. Or you can use a phone number we have, which people hardly ever use. Uh, and the phone number is, let me get it for you here. Uh, 347-352-0079, 347-352-0079. The only problem is, is that we can't see you, and that makes it a little more difficult to make it work on the citizen panel. But be that as it may, here comes Charlie Wallace, uh, who uh, is our first caller in tonight, calling from Texas. Um, I've got to uh, find a place for him, which I think will put him in the uh, number one spot. spot. Uh, you know, we'll put him in that spot there. There we go, Charles Wallace. There he goes. And we do that. And there's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you this evening? How's it going in your part of the world? How's it going in your part of the world? They shut down everything. I mean, everything, everything, everything? Well, no, I mean, you can go get takeout at restaurants and stuff. Yeah, that's what we have, too. They've and the grocery stores are open. In fact, that's the only time I've been out of the house since Friday is, is to go to the grocery store on Monday. You know, for the first time since we moved in here, I, I mean, I, I've always loved the apartment I live in, but I love it even more because of its size. Because while we can get cabin fever, it's a large cabin to get cabin <laughs> fever in. And uh, but Marjorie mentioned that we have in our whole marriage never spent so much time together yeah. as we have in the last couple of days because for about a week she hasn't gone to work she's telecommuting and I don't leave the house and I'm kind of afraid to to be honest with you because of my condition where I was I just had uh, you know surgery yeah uh, and I'm over eighty and. Here's here's the sad part about it. Here here's where where I am. Let's say um, there are two of us, and uh, there's only one ventilator available. Okay, yeah. and I'm 80, uh, and I've been operated on for prostate cancer, and there's another person. He's 40. Yep. Who are they going to give the ventilator to? The 40 year old. That's right. So you know, I, there's a bullet, there's a gun to my head. 
uh, and I've got to be very careful. So when I go out, and it, while I maybe didn't need the face mask, uh, I wasn't doing that purely for show on that tape, uh, tape on that on the video. Uh, it was basically something I did in order to uh, uh, make sure that I didn't uh, come in contact with the deadly germs. And uh, you know, I mean, it's out there. We've got a real, we've got a real problem brewing here in in New York, uh, in which they feel yep. now that it's going to be at least, at least, uh, forty five days before we even get back to any kind of normalcy, if that. That's if we're lucky. That's if we're lucky. Uh, but we don't, uh, we don't get that, you know. Let me uh, just, uh, I'm putting some people on here so that we can, here comes Bree. Bree, where, hey. where are you? You don't, don't look like you're in your normal place. No. Where, where, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, get, I got, oh, two, my, got yeah. two Charlies. Hold on a second. I thought I'd hit Bree. Two's better than one. There we go. There's Bree. Okay. Now, do Bree. Okay. Come on. There we go. Where are you, Bree? I, I'm in Kuala Lumpur. You really are. That's... Son of a bitch. Okay. I mean, that, just a different room, huh? Yeah, different room. Yeah. Um, that's a long story. Uh, I don't want to bore your your listener, your listener, listeners and viewers, mm -hmm. but uh, I got a dog barks across the street. New neighbors got a new watchdog. So I moved to a different room, and um, mm -hmm. that room has a smaller bed, and it's on the floor. I don't have a frame yet, and I got bit on my... Pinky finger by a cockroach at 3:50 a.m. Really? <laughs> yeah. So we got to we're taking some countermeasures this morning to uh, get rid of that problem. But uh, yeah. yeah. Other than that, the uh, the lockdown is off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have the lockdown there too? We are. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, par partial yep. partial lockdown. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to look you guys up. See if Malaysia's on here. I think we I, do, I, and we don't have that many. How, um, how many? It's you know it changes uh, of course, so I don't know the latest, but it I think it's somewhere around five hundred, and we have uh, I think we just have one or two deaths, but those are not confirmed. They're still yeah Malaysia six hundred and seventy three in Malaysia. You're right okay. under you're right under a cruise ship. <laughs> and uh, uh, Japan is, is above you, and Denmark, and Sweden, and Belgium, and Austria, and Norway, and the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom, and Switzerland, and then the U.S., and then France. We're going on the way up. South Korea, Germany, Spain, Iran, Italy, so Alex, China. I, yes. I have a theory that a lot of people have already had it and gone through it, and are on the other side. They thought it was the flu. Probably, you know, le like me, late December and through January. And mm -hmm. because it would have been mis it would have been undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Yeah. Well, you um, th you th think you had it, right? I think so. Did yeah. you run a high temperature? Did you run a high temperature? At a certain point, I did. Mm. But but here's the thing: no one around me got sick, and that's why I hesitate to to say it because. No one in my immediate family got sick, and that should have happened with coronavirus. And I, I had my in-laws here, and they were elderly. So, I, so, you know, 80-20, 80% I probably had the regular cold and flu. But I was traveling a lot. I, my in-laws were here from China. I was in Thailand twice. I went down to Singapore. I mean, if anybody were to get it, it should have been. Singapore? How do you get in and out of Singapore? Because supposedly they're not letting anybody out of Singapore now. That was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so... You know, because I, my wife's my wife's boss, my my boss's wife, uh, live, lives. They have a place in Singapore, and she's in Singapore. And he went back to Hong Kong, by the way. They let him go back to Hong Kong, but he can't get to Singapore to see them because he can't get into Singapore. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, yeah, it's a real problem. They have some restrictions, but actually now it's the other way. They're worried because Malaysia provides a lot of. Uh, you know, trade and resources to Singapore. Without without Malaysia, I think it'll be very tough for them. And now we've closed down for two weeks. Now they say they're going to still have trade going over the border, so they'll still get food and whatnot. But with the rush here, I'm not sure. I mean, two days ago, 
we had the panic shopping uh, on Monday. It was really bad. Really? Um, then uh, Monday night they made the announcement, and they said Wednesday uh, everything would go into partial lockdown. So Tuesday it was actually not too bad. I went out, went to lunch, and I picked up some uh, grocery items. But Monday was impossible. And you know the thing I don't understand is everybody rushed the supermarkets. Yet it was very clearly stated the supermarkets will stay open. Are yeah. They buying, are they buying? That's the one place you can go. Are, are they hoarding toilet paper and Purell like they are in the states? Wait yes. a minute. They're, they're they're hoarding toilet paper in Greenland, Phil. <laughs> really, <laughs> I'm story. serious. I'm serious. There was a report that came out of Greenland that they're hoarding toilet paper in Greenland. Every place on the planet that hoarding toilet paper, and I, I I would agree with you if you would say. The last thing I would want if I went to a store would be toilet paper. If I had to take anything out of there, it would be something to eat. You know? Well, that's yeah. what you take a cab in the subway. If you have a car, you, you'd get toilet paper. Two weeks ago, we ordered big boxes of tissue paper. We'd get them like five in a you yeah. know, box. The guy showed up. He had these huge rolls of toilet paper. I mean, like 100 rolls each. We had 200 rolls. And my wife said, uh, yeah, whatever, we'll just take that. Because actually, that's more expensive. Two weeks later, we've got a gold mine, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Hey, luck sometimes comes. I got a complaint here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the uh, YouTube screen. Mm -hmm. And, Alex, you're not social distancing. I think we're a little <laughs> too close <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can distance you a little further. Uh, sure you could. <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> I can uh, I can maybe move you somewhere. Uh, if I didn't want to screw up this perfect grid that I created, I'd do something funny like move you off to the side or something, you know. Well, you just do the 12, you know, the 12 spot and yeah. uh, you know, then you move people apart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. But anyway, I mean, it's it's um it's it's it, there is a new normal as I as I titled that video that I did uh, that's existing in which I don't know if we're ever going to go back to the way we were. You know, I don't know that people are suddenly going to, you know, in 45 days. Like Mario Cuomo says, they're estimating at least 45 days before this uh, epidemic hits its high point and then starts to drop. 45 days. Well, 45 days without movie theaters, 45 days without restaurants, 45 days without a lot, without a lot of different things. And you're going to find that people have adapted to that. And now mm -hmm. that adapting, you, you know, they're not going to go to the movie theaters. They're, they're gonna, they, 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 they can, they found they can stay home and watch what they want to watch. Lockdown. Hmm? You know, San Francisco, Bay Area, seven counties are on lockdown. I can't open my store. The, there's only there's there's nothing to do except gabnet and uh, <laughs> I was th I was working on a possible plan just so people could talk with each other of just being able to open up the Skype lines not do the video but open up the Skype lines where they automatically answer and people can talk to each other you know because uh, but I it it's I I, I, I with their banana phones hmm banana <laughs> with their banana phones. Banana phones, yeah, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, it it um, it's it's it, 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 I'm still I'm going a little crazy, a little stir crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank I God mean, for Netflix. Yeah, yeah, well, thank God. Yeah, well, I, we're we're watching the, the uh, whole. We're binging the, the whole four seasons of The Expanse. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will take us a while. But after that, we're binging through, Young Sheldon here. Huh. Young Sheldon here. Oh, really? Uh, Young yeah. Sheldon. Huh? I'm actually exempt from the uh, from the from the deal. Contractors, plumbers, electricians uh, that are working in people's homes are are actually allowed to be out and and do business. That, My yeah. store is closed. Yeah. Uh, I'm still uh, receiving merchandise. My warehouseman was there today. Uh, my uh, operations manager was there getting jobs out. So we're doing jobs, but we just can't be open to the public. Yeah, but it, we you know, canceled I, our contractors here. We had people come supposed to come for the air conditioning. We said, let's push it back four weeks. You're you're in um, you're in Kuala Lumpur and you push the air conditioning off. <laughs> no, it's clean. You know, clean. It has to be done once a year. 
We're about well, due, but we can wait. A, we can wait a few days. Working. You're well, not, you know, I would. I I, I find that kind of weird mail, because okay. I would think that you could you'd be more worried about just a random person coming in to do some service in your home, uh, to not be already the, infected with this I, flu. The rule right. is. Uh, if the installer is willing and the customer is willing and you just have right. to ask verbally, mm -hmm. uh, then you can do it. And so I agree. That, I agree with that, Phil. But, you know, at the same time, what are we doing? Are we really going to, you know, are we really trying to do this or it's, we have to? It's about you know? crowds. It's about social distancing and it's about not going. Yeah, into but, 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 but you're saying don't get near people. But, you know, somebody goes in to install a carpet, for instance. And there, that social distancing may be corrupted by uh, doing you, that. You're, you, the carpets come 12 feet wide. You start rolling one of those out, and you're not out of the way <laughs> by at least 12 feet. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know. All you I'm know. all I'm saying is is that I don't know that I would trust that. You know. Well, listen, I, I don't trust. I don't trust the 12 foot so six foot social distancing. You know, I I don't know that I can't. I understand. Somebody you can't know, speak further. Than that. Look, yeah. uh, he just coughed. Uh, you know, uh, I just ate an apple. It's uh, not there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and he didn't cover his mouth. That's that's the problem. I'm in my room, Bill. Yeah, he's all by himself. Come on, who's he got? You know, me. You're only. Two I got into an argument with a guy in Singapore who sneezed openly in a restaurant. I yell. I moved away from him quickly, and his friend started laughing. And I look back. I'm like, seriously, dude? You think that's funny? Like, like I gave him the death glare. You yeah. know? <laughs> he looked back like, hmm. You know, uh, and I'm like, yeah, you idiot. You white devil. You you make you making hot. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my neighbor. I, I discovered my neighbor doesn't like Americans. The guy with the dog. Ah. He told me he told me it's a dog. Dogs bark. This is Malaysia. We have a watchdog. Go go back where you came from. Oh. I'm like, yeah, well, we have dogs too, and dogs bark too, but we also have friendly neighbors and bad neighbors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we eat those dogs in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello, t uh, Tony. How are you? I I can't get over it. You can't get over it. What? Well, why can't you get over it? We just lost him. Mm. Oh, so. Well, we lost Tony. I'll have to call back. I actually heard Ber Bernie Sanders uh, on C-SPAN radio, so, which I listened to. He, I, he said he had a calm and reassuring voice. I, I kind of liked it. We lost Tony. He was so young. He's frozen. No. Oh. <laughs> He's taking this uh, lockdown too seriously. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's Tony. He got him back. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. How's how's it going for you, Tony? I, I'm telling you, I'm in shock, Alex. Come on, Remember, you're always locked up. No, nah, this is bad news. We're getting thousand dollar checks, though. I hear. Is this true? Oh. <laughs> there's so, there's something where to spend it. it. There's something. Uh, um, uh, excuse me. I, I mentioned our mayor, uh, governor as being Mario Cuomo. It's Andrew Cuomo. Mario was his that father. Was top end, Mario. Yeah, it was his it's father. Just about thirty years out of date. But I got that wrong one day with my uh, with my neurologist, and he wrote it down in the thing. He didn't know who the governor was, you know. <laughs> Bella. Andrew Co Cuomo did such a magnificent job today. Did anybody see him? Yeah, yeah, he, he was praising. I seen him every day. He yeah. was praising Trump, uh, saying that uh, Trump did a good job. This wasn't political. He no, was no, no, no. That wasn't what he was saying at all. You're no. taking it. Yeah, and, I heard. Take, take, I heard it too. And what he said was that he made a call to Trump and asked for his help, and he was very good about it. He didn't suddenly say that his whole presidential demeanor has been terrific or anything like you're making it out to be. You're misquoting what and you're misinterpreting yeah. what was said. He said that Trump was the second coming. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know? And he was so thankful for all his help. Yeah, yeah. Well, second coming should go all over his face. <laughs> anyway, um, the you know, uh, it it is... Um, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, 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 Cuomo was the most presidential I've seen any of these people be. I mean, the, and the governors are, are really mm -hmm. doing a, a great job. Uh, and, it, you know, I mean, it, but the, our president, not so much so. Of course, he, he thinks the governors are doing such a good job that he said, you guys go out and get your own ventilators. Yep. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll send you a check. Yeah. 
thousand bucks. You know, but how many? Uh, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, what, what what this is like? There's a whole new social ethic I think that's being created here. Just even in the social distancing. Now, social distancing was not a problem for me since I've always been socially distant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, huh? I said, me too. Yeah. So, we, you have, we, you know, we have no problem at all. Just stay away. I, I stay, told away. The guy, stay away. I told the guy today that uh, my, my friends really like me. They've been socially distancing themselves since 2016. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's funny is you turn on, the news networks get a little ridiculous about it. Uh, there's one show with uh, with Andrea Mitchell, and she's in the middle of the desk, and they have this big long desk, and there's one person on either side. And I'm going, come on, you know? This, this is overdoing it a tad. Let me see here. Darth Pat. Where's Darth Pat? Hold on a second. Cancel. You know, Let me go back in here. Um, here's here's two headlines. That I, you know, I wrote an article for a magazine here. It'll come out. Uh, and I, I said we live in an era of Rashomon media. Mm -hmm. the two headlines in the same. I'm on Google News. Reuters says new coronavirus can persist in air for hours and on surfaces for days. Study. Next headline. New coronavirus stable for hours on surfaces. National Institute of Health. That's two contra Reuters has one story, National Institute of Health, and they contradict each other. Depends so, what kind of surface. No, I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there, and oh, yeah. and uh, a lot of it is being uh, being perpetrated also by the press, who constantly are having experts on talking about this, and the more experts you have on talking about this, the more confusing it gets. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, uh, Patrick. Patrick. I'm sure this had been covered in the days that I wasn't on, mm -hmm. but the swine flu was a big deal back about 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. The thing we didn't have 10 or 11 years ago was Facebook and Twitter. And that's where a lot of that misinformation, along with, as you say, like the 24-hour news cycle, but you go on Facebook mm -hmm. and every other person had a different take on what you're supposed to do and nobody knows any you know i mean and that's the that's the difference i mean the swine flu i get it it's different than this but i think social media has really exacerbated this well i think it, i think it's made more confusing certainly yeah, yeah. That, that's what i mean it, it's exacerbated the confusion and the inability to get concrete information because nobody knows where an accurate source is anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, 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 Phil. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, watch the uh, Super Tuesday uh, uh, results, and so I, I click on it, and Jake Tapper from CNN is on there, mm -hmm. and he's talking to another pundit, and they're talking about how many cases. And he, he says, you know, yesterday there was this many cases, and today there are this many more. And and, and it, he just kept repeating and repeating and repeating how many cases. Then I turned to Fox News, and uh, Tucker Carlson's talking to some doctor, mm -hmm. and they're talking about, well, these are the things, you know, you can do to make life better and and so forth. So I just felt that uh, CNN and Jake Tapper were ginning up uh, the situation. Well, they, you know, is it, no, I think if we go over to Fox, you'll find they were they were tamping it down. You know, uh, be, because it's it, being it, more realistic. No, they're not being more realistic. Uh -huh. the, the realism is somewhere in the middle. I think I would listen to Cuomo. Uh, one of the estimates that we've had is that by the time this thing is is over, there will be at least a million cases in New York City alone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Bree, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, I want to uh, give two more examples. The Washington Post and the New York Times have contradictory headlines. Yeah. Not only that, the Washington Post, you know, they they have a paywall. Anything that has to do with this virus should not be behind a paywall. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says coronavirus looks different in kids than adults. Well, if you have kids, that could be important information, but you have to pay for it. Come on, Bezos. 
how much money are you making? <laughs> Make that free to the public. And then New York Times says, children and coronavirus, research finds some become seriously ill. So, you know, it's ridiculous. The, there should be no paywalls on public health emergencies. And Bezos really, you know. No, I agree with you on that. The information's even worse. What's happened today is uh, two uh, New York Times and uh, I think it was the Washington Post had their credentials pulled in China uh, so that they couldn't report the facts because China is concealing, uh, yeah. you know, the uh, these things and it's making it harder for us to, you know, to deal with stuff. Oh, the guy that Tucker Carlson had on had come up with a theory of how he could use survivors of from the coronavirus and use their antibodies in their blood plasma to treat health workers so that it doesn't become an epidemic to health workers and we lose our health workers. Or we kill our health workers by doing it. Well, possibly. But yeah, I, so, I mean, you know, I mean, several it, cases. I, I'd, I'd like to know who this quack was on Tucker Carlson, because if it was on Tucker Carlson, he, he had to be a quack. Uh, um, uh, he was he was a doctor, but he was from a university, Johns Hopkins. He was the head of uh, Johns Hopkins. Hopkins. at John, John Hopkins. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, I, I got I keep getting these things. I'm sure you get these things in the mail from various institutions, you know, telling you that, well, we're we're closed for the duration or. Here's what you got to do, and here's what you can't do. Uh, I got a thing from, well, first I got a thing from Blink Fitness. That's my gym I don't go to lately. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they're, they're going live at 8 o'clock in the morning on Facebook, and they're going to help you do exercises, mm -hmm. okay? Because all their places are closed. Yeah. Uh, uh, then uh, this was the one that got me. Mount Sinai, where I am a patient. Dear valued Mount Sinai patient. Sure, I'm valued. I've got like, you know, $20,000 worth of radioactive seeds in my prostate. That's why I'm, a, you know. But it I says, at, at, as of March 17th, due to escalating COVD, we're prohibiting visitors from across the, across the Mount Sinai system. Uh, this includes visitors to the emergency departments, inpatient units. Anyway, it says there will be limited exceptions to this policy, which include pediatrics, one healthy visitor allowed. Maternity and postpartum, one healthy listen, uh, visitor uh, um, uh, allowed. I guess uh, one visitor can, I guess a husband can go see the mother in mm. that case. Now, here's the part that gets me. End of life palliative care, one healthy visitor allowed. Why does that visitor even have to be healthy? I mean, this is an end of life thing. You know, it's palliative <clears throat> care. Yeah. Ambulatory ger geriatrics, one healthy visitor allowed. Discharge, one healthy visitor allowed to pick up discharge patients. I mean, and, and then we have a friend whose husband is in a, a medical facility because he has something like MS, I can't remember what it is, and he has to be taken care of 24-7, right? She can't see him. She went to see him every day. She can't see him. And uh, we've talked about Will Durst, you know, and his problem, and he's in a uh, rehabilitative um, uh, environment. And Debbie wrote me the other night and said she's not allowed to go see him. Oh, wow. You know? So, I mean, this is, there, there, there are elements of this that are very troubling because people who have people they care about can't, can't be there to, to <clears throat> console them and be with them. And, you know, I think about uh, Debbie talking to uh, uh, Will on the phone, which he says she does, but I don't know how much he is capable of actually speaking on the phone. So, you know, <clears throat> speaking of which, by the way, um, uh, uh, Phil pointed this out to me because I would have never seen it. Uh, Debbie had put up a, a GoFundMe page uh, to raise money because the cost of this rehabilitation is not covered by their medical insurance. And so she needs some money. And uh, uh, so if you go over to GoFundMe or you even go up over to my Facebook page, I've got a link to that GoFundMe page, uh, you'll find uh, Debbie's uh, plea for money. And um, I then took my thing, my, uh, Facebook my Facebook page, and I put it up on the Facebook page and asked people to give. And I also went to several other Facebook pages where I have a viewership 
and uh, they went there, and uh, we were, we have been, uh, uh, they have gone from, I think they went from about 54,000, and then now up around 63,427. So they've got a nice little piece of change to work with to they get him get taken care of. But the point was that really got me was the idea that, he hello, by the way, to Kevin, um, who I will now put up here. There we go. Uh, uh, that, that bothered me is that their insurance doesn't take care of uh, the uh, uh, some, some of the therapy that he needs, the physical therapy he needs to get his arm and his leg working. And uh, that Medicaid, really bought he? that. What? He's over 65. Doesn't he have Medicare? He has Medicare, but, you know, maybe they don't have the supplemental. I, I was talking to him about the fact that he should get a hold of because he, he does have uh, a SAG card, a SAG after yeah. card, that he should get that insurance, but they haven't. But even at that, it costs money. But for some reason, and I know my I, Med Medicare, I think, covered physical therapy for me. But it yeah. may not be the kind of physical therapy he has to have. Anyway, if you go over to my Facebook page, there's a direct link there. And if you're not, just go over to, um, I think you can go to uh, um, GoFundMe and um, uh, just put in the name, search for Will Durst, I imagine. That's what you would do. So, you know. Jennifer, you, you know, you, you donated. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was generous. Well, you know, I donated what I could. I know I'm, I'm, I got enough bills on my own. You know. Yeah. But with, you know, with I, the co the copays yeah. are killing me. Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, my uh, let's see here. My radiation was forty six thousand dollars. I could have gotten you thirty percent off. <laughs> well, that isn't what Medicare no. pays them, but that's what they're hoping for. <laughs> and. and um, I don't know how much the seeds are going to run. They're somewhere around twenty, thirty thousand. So, the fact I might have to put out a thousand for that much stuff, I guess, is okay. You know, could have got a better deal from burpee seeds. Yeah. But anyway, I, everybody, if you can, let's. If she wants to get up to sixty-five thousand dollars, and she's really near that goal. And if you go over to just go to my, if you go to my Facebook page, there's a link there, and you just click on their faces, take you right to the page. Donate whatever you can if you can donate. I think you're responsible for probably ten thousand dollars worth of that sixty-three. She was at fifty-three something or fifty-two well, uh, something. Well, when I told you about it. Yeah, well, yeah, but and, it, and yeah, I don't know if I did ten, but I mean there are a lot of other people who did it that I didn't in influence. Okay, but uh, I a I, lot of people. Put on their uh, uh, on their uh, not on their donation, but you could see their donation, and you could see that on your site they said yes, I donated. Yeah, and, uh, or they had a like or something, and then you look and you'd see the name and yeah. Yeah. put two and two together. Well, I the reason I did it is because I wish I could give more than I did, uh, but uh, if I could somehow create more for yeah. them, uh, I want to do that because. You know, th this is a perfect example of something that I was bringing up for a long, the longest time when I was doing comedy shows in San Francisco and so on. I was urging the comics to get together and start a union. And not for the reasons that you think. Not so that they could establish prices that clubs would have to pay them in order to do, you know, to have them work in their club. But so that they could have a collective health insurance policy. Uh, because when you're a union, you can go out and shop around for health insurance policies that want your union to be uh, a, 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 a client of theirs. Uh, because the, the, having a group like that is very powerful in that respect. And it's never come to pass. So the comedians today, if they don't have full insurance, uh, they're going to be kind of like uh, Will is right now. Without that extra cushion that they need in order to get them out of something like this because you don't you just don't don't plan for something like this happening oh, you know? never yeah they uh, debbie said that uh not only did they need the rehab but then uh shortly after you posted it she raised it to 65 from 50 mm -hmm. because they needed a ramp uh for i guess they, a wheelchair they need, no they need a, a a lift for the for, for uh, to go up the stairs 
One oh, of those, is that what it yeah, was? one of those things. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and simple things like that, you know, but they cost a lot of money. And, and uh, Medicare doesn't, I think, pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Patrick's. Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick knows a little more about this than I do because you probably. Do you have Medicare, Patrick? I mean, because of your situation? Uh, yeah, as of right now, yeah. Yeah. And um, I just got a new wheelchair on Tuesday last week. And it took from October until last Tuesday to get it. Yeah. And um, I ended up paying out of pocket uh, just under six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it same it, same wheelchair I had it before, but it's an expense that you, you know. I mean, you, you plan for it, but it's still shocking that. Well, this is, you know, this is why, of course, we all talk about single payer health care or some form of that so that Americans don't have to worry about that. You know, you should worry more about whatever rehabilitation you need than than having to worry about how you're going to pay for the wheelchair you're sitting in. You know, uh, that, that shouldn't be it just shouldn't be a problem. And it is, you know. Uh, and I don't know if you believe in single payer health care, but some form of something that helps people out. Uh, yes. Well, uh, I can't bitch about the problem. Hmm? Some, some advice needed. Yeah. Uh, I ate a power bar for breakfast. I have a little something here. Should I be drinking sparkling water or still water? Still water. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. How about uh, tap? Biden has apparently Biden has won all the uh, states today. Yeah. And I also want to ask um, Alex, we we're doing most things online here. We had our first meeting yesterday morning and actually being on the citizens panel has helped me a lot to run the meetings because uh, you have to have one person in charge and you have to have people raise hands. Otherwise, everybody just goes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And also, do you guys have WhatsApp community groups? Uh, no, we, we, uh, we don't, uh, my, I think my we wife, I think my wife is involved or has what, what's app, um, uh, at, for her job. Uh, but I don't know if she has groups. Uh, and See, I, I use Microsoft teams for work. WhatsApp, I consider my personal space, but we do have a community WhatsApp group and they send all kinds of things all the time. A lot of fake news and and some things are funny, some things are serious, and it's like just all the time. But I don't want to go out of the group because occasionally there'll be something that's important, like there's a fire or a house got broken into. And like you need that, you know, but I just wish they had an editor. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir. Phil. Microsoft Teams. That came up on my computer the other day after mm -hmm. an update, and I thought it was malware. And so I, I kept going to malware bites trying to get rid of it. <laughs> it wouldn't go away. Well, Microsoft Teams, I'll bet you, is a form of Skype because Microsoft owns Skype. Yeah. You know, so uh, it, 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 I didn't know what it did, and I didn't want it on there. And, uh, right, you know, right. it, it would come up as soon as I... So uh, let me let me let me go around the panel here, Charlie. What have you been doing to uh, to ward off the uh, evils of the <clears throat> coronavirus? Just not going out. That's basically it. Just not going out. Yeah. Uh, and how, what are the streets like there where you are? In Texas, they're practically empty. Mm hmm. How about how about you, uh, uh, Mister uh, Mister Zeller, um, <laughs> Jeff? Well. Yeah, interesting change because I'm I'm home again. Yeah, weren't we supposed to have lunch with you next week or something? Oh uh, yeah, I think maybe it's canceled. I think it's canceled. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but uh, if you wanna if you wanna send me something on the internet, that'll be okay. No, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, but I I tell you the interesting thing is over this community that I'm in. Which is all, I don't know, fifty-five plus people. Mm -hmm. The only people I see walking today was people who had dogs. Okay, mm -hmm. and and you, I didn't see anybody outside practically. And then all of a sudden, some guy down the street, he's got like five cars pulling up. He's having a freaking party. 
dope dealer. Wow. Probably his birthday or something. But Jesus, you know, I, most people don't really have any sensitivity in this whole thing. Uh, By the way, when you speak about sensitivity, today when I was watching the Cuomo uh, press conference, he, he had himself, and then he had about four, uh, four other experts there. And they were all at a long table where they were all distanced about six feet apart. Okay? Yeah. Now you go over to the, to the uh, uh, Trump uh, press conference about uh, 20 minutes later, and he's on stage with all these guys crowding the podium, including Fauci, who should know better. Anthony, you know? Next to you. That's because he doesn't have B.O. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> Patrick. Patrick. I don't understand the social distancing thing like in the case you're discussing with Cuomo and that because they're all going to be passing the same table on the way out and likely touching it and breathing the same fucking air. Well, you're absolutely and you're absolutely correct, yeah. Patrick, but where you're wrong is what they were trying what they probably were trying to do was to set an example. Okay? What? It's not going to help anywhere anyway. Well, it, no, it does help. I mean, social distancing is very important in this. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin's uh, uh, nodding his head yes. It, it, say something, Kevin, about it. Yeah, it, it is. It's got to help because uh, you don't want to be spitting on anybody. <laughs> yeah. Basically, is what it comes down to. Uh, we just, we just uh, had another death today here in town. So we're on number three. Wow. Um, Jeff has been raising this. And we've been in shelter in place since Friday. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, oh. you were saying something? Well, when when we drove across, we often had to stop, uh, get gas, and and maybe uh, go to the bathroom and, mm -hmm. and uh, get some food and things like that. So the first thing is, is Pam starts, whenever she goes into a store or anything to get in, She's wiping stuff mm. rather than touching anything. Yeah. And actually, when we came into our house, the first thing she goes, she goes, yeah, let me it, take, take the food. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm not off. trying to be paranoid. I'm just trying to be careful. That's yeah. all, you know. Well, it is. But, you know, she says, take all your clothes off. Go take a shower. <laughs> Some of your Oh, oh, cool. well, I'll, I'll tell you, when you want to talk about social distancing, MSNBC the other day is an example on how they were social distancing, was saying, well, I'm here at my desk, and my other guest is oh, half, a, half a studio yeah. away, and the other one's another two-thirds of the studio away. Well, and saw, I'm going, see, I'm sorry, you don't have to get that far apart. Yeah. You know? Did you see Today Show? No. Al Roker, uh, he's not there, and neither is uh, the other guy. What the hell's his name? Didn't they both become uh, positive? I don't know if they were, but someone so, in their family or something. Somebody. Now it's just yeah. uh, the two ladies are there, and they're sitting apart. But Al did his weather from home, and the other guy, what the hell's his name? Um, uh, who's uh, the other Huh? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember what, who you're talking about. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, but anyway, uh, uh, John Oliver, for instance, this week did his show, and there was no audience, oh, and he I didn't know. do it from the CBS studios. He had to do it from somewhere else because well, you know the CBS else. studio he worked out of was contaminated. Well, the couch is now individual places. The Fox uh, outnumbered. Mm -hmm. Really? It's five different places there's no couch <laughs> oh, oh really i haven't watched that lately yeah i turned it on the other day and it was five different screens i'm going i'm not gonna watch this now <laughs> yeah it's like i went shopping today it's almost like you got to come home with the groceries and clean the groceries off yeah, you know, it's, good. It's, it's insanity well really. i mean the, be the best thing you can do like i wear a mask see i mean uh, you're a little safer than i am tony although you're what over 50 now well, I'm afraid because of my mom. I'm 50. Yes, now. right. I don't want to bring you, anything yeah, home. you could bring something home. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm always, you know, but, but, but I, I, I just feel I'm that I have to take more precautions. I, I have to take more precautions than some teenager would. 
in that I've got to put good. I've got to put the, the the gloves on. I I took my gloves uh, my winter gloves and I had them with me in case I needed them because I can also work my iPhone and other things with it. But I didn't wind up as you see in the video needing them. Uh, but I did wear the mask, uh, and that mask isn't really that secure. That's but, not the N95. No, I have an N95 here, but they're 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 a little, he was one. they're a little more difficult to wear. First of yeah. all, and secondly, I wasn't going to get that close to somebody that I would you know it yeah, would stop a, some spittle or something like that you know. She's but taking, but you, I, but I, I have to be stuff. very careful. Because, you know, and then Marjorie was going out to Starbucks to go get her coffee, and now they hand it to her through the door. And I went to, I said to her, you know, I wouldn't go out, dear, number one, because you're no spring chicken. But more than that, I'm here, and I could catch yeah. something from you, and it could kill me because I'm compromised. Unless maybe all these radioactive seeds kills the coronavirus. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't want to overreact. Hey, you might be lucky. Yeah, like, it's, when it's I went the to the zombie school. apocalypse. It's the Walking Dead all over again. You know? I'm feeling yeah, I'm wheezy doing, right you, now. You guys hear that? I'm oh, feeling it's wheezy different. right now, but it's it's allergy season as well here. <clears throat> right? All you do is sneeze in the store, and everybody will move away from you. That's it. Yeah. Well, that's you the want way. that toilet paper fake a sneeze. That's the way you get to be first in line. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they 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 give you the they give you the yeah. uh, You're I sick. That. I don't know if you guys can hear that dog. The dog is driving me nuts. The, our security guard just goes by, and there's another guy washing a the car. They're neighbors. There's no threat. Get some I'm sure you can hear it. Uh, earplug, earbuds. Really? Well, just come on. Hear the dog. Just get some noise well, canceling. Isn't there any way you can go to that neighbor and say, can you put a bullet through your dog's head? What? I had it out with him, and he's the one who said he doesn't like Americans. Go home. Uh -huh. It's just Malaysia. He's Malaysian dogs bark. He asked the other three uh, houses around, and they didn't. They didn't think it was a problem. Well, it's because it just started. You know, it's it's just recent. And also, he has a short temper, and he looks very mean. So if he if he came up and knocked the door, hey, is my dog bothering you? I'm sure people would say, no, it's not a problem for us, sir. You know, it, but I've got up in his I face like about it. And I said, <laughs> Can you call the police and make a? a, a now, you know, a I threatened that. I said, I'm going to call the police. I got to get a lawyer. Who's your lawyer? I don't want a lawyer. I don't want to deal with him. Why do you call the police? It's just a dog. It's just a dog. Dogs bark. No. Uh, I'm surprised he. No I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he can stand it. I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm worried about him about him yeah. Yeah. We if love if our dogs. It, They're cute when they bark. If Mine's the dog stupid. barks, it sends back a frequency at twenty-five thousand hertz. Oh it's supposed God. to disrupt them. So I'm. I ordered it. I'm going to put it out there, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. It oh, it's one of those that cover. God. I mean, I feel like I'm under siege. I, You know, here I'm eating my lunch. I'm having a good conversation. But after this, I got to hold meetings online. I got to read books. I got to write things. And every five minutes, every five or ten minutes, woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, our old friend, uh, our old Al friend Brian uh, has written here. Uh, that uh, they ran their first RUO test kits last night, starting production Monday for CDC emergency use. Because he usually he was in the business of uh, transporting medical equipment, oh, things like that. So, you know, but it, it, you know, so so we get a million of them out there. How many people need them? You know, how many people would it take to be able to find out who's got it? More than a million. You well, know. if you hoard them like toilet paper, you're only going to get three or four people well, on that million. Yeah, that's true. Right. I got all the kids who want some. some for also, a question: <laughs> if, if you already had it, would you and you're done with it? Would you test positive? What? What do you mean? Let's say you had it and you fought it successfully, and you're done, but you have the an the antibodies or whatever in there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Would it still come back as positive? They, I like, don't know. You'd have to ask a doctor that. I think they've said no because Does that, that, that way you would. You know, once you recover, I, I think you once you recover, that's how they tell you that you don't you can go back out because you don't you don't test positive. Not, I, 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 some guy uh, had two tests after testing positive, and the two tests came back negative. And he said, "That's the positive way of knowing that you're no longer positive is if you get two negative tests after being." Uh, I heard that some people yeah, have tested positive after having it and getting over it. Well, well you can get reinfected, I'm sure. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, and, and we don't know that these how, what kind of sensitivity these tests have. They may be sensitive to someone who has had it as it having been in his body, you know. I don't know. I mean, none of us are doctors, so let's not speculate on any of yeah, those. Yeah, exactly. And hey, one other thing that we've all forgotten, this is Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. <laughs> you know something? The Patty wonderful Day. thing about it was you saw the video I did. No yeah. green vomit on the streets. <laughs> okay? So Yeah, people are afraid if they throw up, they'll get arrested. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't go to a bar. Yeah. 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 Can't go to a bar. And, you know, it was, uh, it's, the, all the, the, the uh, Broadway theaters are closed. All the major restaurants uh, have been shuttered. You can, they can do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I've got some kind of, maybe it's the coronavirus. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's interesting because the, the bar downtown here is a biker bar, and they're on Facebook posting, you know, guys with, you know, plungers and a tube coming out drinking drinks at the bar. Yeah. Making yeah. fun yeah. of the whole thing, and I'm going, oh, God. <laughs> well, well you know, there's, no, there's nothing funny about <clears throat> this. Uh, you know, um, I think that uh, normally I would say, aren't we overdoing this a little bit? But what oh. this is is a case of an ounce of prevention being worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and this is the ounce of prevention. Maybe a lot of these things we're doing is overdoing it, but we're overdoing it because we have such a lack of information about this particular virus that we don't know how to handle it. And um, I think that, uh, um, you know, our... Um, our government certainly, I think, has done a stinking job, okay? Just a stinking job. And uh, I, I just think in a, in a situation like this, I mean, I, I heard Trump today say that uh, somebody was mentioning about, you know, you said this is a time when we shouldn't be political and we shouldn't get into political fights and so on. And then after you said that for three days straight, you were writing tweets putting down governors and politicians and Democrats. And he said, well, that's only because they came after me. You know, he takes everything so personally. I mean, you say something like that, then, then be the example of what, you're, what you say. You just started going after Trump, and you had 40 people, and now you got 38. You know, how do you like that? You know? <laughs> well, how does, he, how does he say he, he knew it was a pandemic all along? That's what bothered me. Yeah, when he called it a hoax two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, he was, uh, wasn't even paying attention to this. Yeah, you know, all, kind of all, all of a sudden, it's he said, I've been calling it a pandemic all along. You know what? I he also said something the other day which really got to me, in which he said, um, Well, you know, uh, this came along and it's affected the stock market, and who could have seen this coming? Everybody was seeing this sort of thing coming, even before there was a thing called the Corona 19 virus or whatever. There were people saying there is going to be an eventual pandemic of immense proportions, and we should be ready for it. And nobody did anything about it. Instead, Trump went and dismantled a lot of the CDC. Mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, uh, th this was something that, that uh, I, I've heard, we've all heard people talk about the possibilities of a pandemic. Uh, of, of, you know, because we, you know, we did have the Spanish flu, and that was an example of you know, a really bad pandemic that was made only worse by the fact that they didn't have things like antibiotics, they didn't have all the things, all the, the arsenal of medicine that we have today. Uh, and it wound up killing, what, 50 million people, did we say? That, yeah, that was a small, yeah. a small estimate. They didn't have the wall. If they had the wall, Stockholm <laughs> wouldn't have gotten over here. Yeah, Where's right. Well, you see, uh, that isn't where most of it's come from. It's not like everybody's saying, hey, you know, the virus got here through Mexico. Mexico doesn't have any cases, I understand. They, they, Mexico's yeah, I noticed about that. I was looking, what about looking at the map. But neither does West Virginia. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's what going on down well, there? I was work? looking at the map, and the whole southern end, there's really low counts down in the southern United States. And then Mexico only had like two or three. They mm -hmm. sent all of their infected up here. Oh, come on. Imagine they don't have any. Send them over their bed. On a bus, right? In caravans. Caravan, yeah. Let me no, see. We here. brought it over there going to raid their stores for toilet paper. 
<laughs> God, toilet paper is oh, hard Jesus. to find. I've seen people selling it outside. I mean, it's terrible. I got lucky. This is all Brian Neary posted, uh, sent me a, a, a message showing me his their first uh, SARS COVID uh, test. Uh, uh, the, um, you know, what it looks like. Let's see if I can make it bigger. No, I can't. It's, it's, uh, I don't think you can see it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what it looks like. And uh, that's I heard a lot of is that it for the test? Okay, in all of Mexico, which is a fairly mm -hmm. large country, I think you'll you'll admit, there are 82 confirmed uh, vi uh, virus cases. Oh, they got it. Oh, it's but, gone up. No, but that's 82. Come on. That's we got like 8,000. We got more than that in Queens, Alex. I think so. I think you may be right, Tony. I, I, uh, really by the way, we have just been joined by let me put a, give him a little slot here. Oh. Even uh, Todd is, uh, is, uh, yeah. has joined us. Todd uh, is out there in his truck. Uh, Socialization. Uh, what, what are you doing to avoid the coronavirus? Anything, Todd? I guess you're just not, not sociable to begin with, right? Um, well, I'm doing that, but I'm doing a whole lot of other things now, oh. too. Um, they, got me, um, uh, they got me running around dealing with a lot of this stuff to send to people. Because of the virus, mm -hmm. so I'll probably be in a lot of the hot spots for a while. Oh shit! No oh, boy, no oh, boy. To help out. Do you have a mask or something like that that you can use? No. Oh boy. Yeah, you're how old, Todd? I think I'm 45. You think you're 45? Okay. <laughs> well, you're yeah, still. I was born you're still. You... I kind of, I kind of like to shave off 10 years. You know, for the ladies. You know oh, I, mean? I see. Okay. Okay. But you might be 55? No, no, no. Can't be. I don't think I've had my 50th uh, reunion yet, and I graduated high school in 72. Yeah. God, <clears throat> my son. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that one. Bill. I'm getting plugged up a little bit here. Maybe <laughs> I am the... coming down with the corona uh, coronavirus. Yeah, uh, it might yeah. be if you're going to say that. Yeah, mm. yeah. But anyway, um, uh, let me see here. And, and, and Kevin, I'm sure you're, what are you doing? Like, you got kids and stuff, right? Yeah, it's been uh, interesting. They just uh, announced this evening that they're going to fill up another three weeks of keeping stuff locked up. And uh, my daughter is not happy about it. Yeah. And it's been real hard on her to uh, try and accept that. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out a way to deal with that. It's not... Uh, been easy she likes going to school huh absolutely she's a very social person and this is really getting hard on her yeah yeah how old is she 15 15 oh that's yeah. rough yeah I that's rough 13 14 here in oh, new york yeah. they have suspended all classes in the state until april 15th at the earliest yeah, it may be that they that. will not resume the school year this year uh, My sister had to go to school today to do the remote learning. Like they were, they were prepping them how to get their uh, prep work. This yeah, is, this is all. Yeah, I'm they're doing trying to figure that out here. This is my life uh, right now. Is because uh, I've got a whole department. Now you're in Malaysia. All, Let's remind people you're in Malaysia. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm poor. We're ready to go, but we just got word from the higher education department. I don't know if it's true or not. It just came over the newspapers. They're suspending all classes from now until April first even online. I guess they're worried that the, that, you know, people aren't ready and they're worried that, uh, you know, that, that, I don't know, that it's not going to be delivered properly. Now I have uh, 10 years of experience developing online classes and delivering them, but you know, I don't know if everybody does, but my daughter started online today. Her first, her first class was music class. And the teacher said, you all need guitars for this lesson. Well, <laughs> you know, we didn't happen to have a guitar sitting around. She had a ukulele. Yeah. But I ordered one online. It's supposed to be delivered yeah. in two or three days. Uh, but he said, oh, go to the school and borrow one. Well, the school's on lockdown. We can't go there. So yeah. there's going to be some hiccups. And I think, yeah. you know, that's what they're finding. She's by the way, by the way, po po you folks on the panel can't see this, but I'm putting up the map again. And if you look, what's very interesting mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, is look at Africa. And, I, yeah. and Africa, really, there are some countries with absolutely no red dots and then a few other yeah. red dots. But for the most part, you can see the continent of Africa in this, in this uh, picture. 
You they can't see they, anywhere they, in Europe. Well, you can't see almost anywhere in the United States. Uh, over well, in Asia, you can't see anything. Russia seems to be, you know, there are how many cases confirmed in Russia? Only 114. They may be lying. They may be lying. Okay. In Siberia or shot. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe any of those numbers at all. Huh? It's impossible to believe any of those numbers at all whatsoever. Especially the Chinese. Well, the Chinese are... It's not because I don't trust the source. It's because they don't... There's no system in place to do the measurement. Well, so we're not even measuring. We're mm-hmm. not very good here. You know, we have no idea who's got it and who doesn't have it because we don't have exactly. the test to find out. And as you're saying, some oh. people may come down with a small little flu, not think anything mm-hmm. of it, and that they had it. You we know, do know how many? Yeah, yeah. Charlie, Charlie, he's got his hand up. Yeah, I was wondering if it's like this anywhere else. In the city of Austin, there's only one place for the whole damn city to go get tested. Wow. Ain't nothing here. Is it basically, Alex, if we get this, let's say you think you might have had a, like a cold. Is it basically you just stay home and just sweat it out? Like if you're young enough, if your immune system is good enough, that's it? Well, yeah. you, you probably won't think of going to a hospital because it's just not that severe. You know, the one they component I think everybody, people. like I've got a little, little chest congestion here and sniffles uh, throughout the day. But I take my temperature and it's you know 97.8 or something like yeah. that. If you don't have a high temperature, okay. that would accompany it, okay? Uh, okay. But if you start yeah. feeling bad and you've got a temperature, get yourself to a to a hospital. Yes. No, Ken. they don't even want you to do that. They want it's you supposed- calling in first. Yeah, you call yeah, first. Call your doctor Uh-oh. and get his uh, approval or whatever. Or if you don't have a doctor, call the hospital. Yeah. Tell them what you've got. What should you do? And they'll probably tell you where to go or not to go. My, uh, my but, eyes were runny the other uh, yesterday, yeah. and I said to Sue, I, I said to Faye, go across the street to the CVS and get me one of those digital thermometers. Mm-hmm. Went over there, and she said they don't have any thermometers. Nope. Okay. Out, but Same we here. we did have one for the dog that was still new in the package. Oh. So I stuck it under my tongue, and I said, it's not getting hot enough. And then I looked, and it's it's a rectal thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> so you hey, put it in the right Bill, place. Bill, <laughs> just, just, go, just go over to Harbor Freight. They got those ones you shoot to the, you know, you can shoot your motor with it. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh, Let's okay. go to Harbor Freight. They're 19 bucks. Great idea. I, okay. I got a good one that I, uh, I, I got a good one. Say at, he's at talking CBS. out of his ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, my ass is hot enough, or <laughs> I guess asses get hotter than ours. Yeah, watch, watch it. We're still trying to monetize, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too late now, though. Well, I, I think uh, who knows? I can't figure out this monetization anyway because, as I say, I put up two shows that are identical, and one passes and one doesn't. From uh, what I heard from this one guy on YouTube that did that uh, expose. He said that you get the you can make more money with better ads if you if they appeal to more people. The, the the type of ad that they put on pays more per click. Yeah. So it's it's not only you know if you want to maximize what you're getting from yeah. the number of ads that they show, you want the the more expensive ones that that get you a better return. Yeah. So would imagine that's why it's important not to... Well, I just think it's arbitrary because if I have two identical programs up and one passes and one doesn't, they are being arbitrary. And now they've said because of the coronavirus, they don't have anybody, if you protest it, to go in and check them because they're all out, you know, sick or whatever. (laughs) I don't know. Hey, listen, that's it. Boy, another time it's just flown by. Oh, by the way, Patrick... I had a spinal tap. They killed everything below my waist. I knew for a while what it was like to be you. You know? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much to everybody. First of all, Charlie, Jeff, Bree in Malaysia, uh, Phil, uh, and uh, Tony, and Patrick. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Kevin, and of course, uh, Todd. Uh, It's all great having you here, and I'm glad you could be here. Uh, why don't you all wave goodbye to the people out there, and I'll wave goodbye at you as well. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. 
There'll be another citizen panel convening in just a few moments right here on most of these same gabnets. <laughs> these same gabnets <laughs> on gabnet. Uh, yeah, right here uh, with, uh, with uh, the intersection and a guy by the name of Jack Bishop. Uh, so he'll be right here with you next over most of the same station. Um, everybody, stay safe. You know, it's an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if it was ever true, uh, now is the time when that little maxim makes a hell of a lot of sense. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, we're here at 1030. And uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night. Stay safe.